Hi everyone, welcome to the Town Manager Download, a podcast about local government in the town of Shrewsbury. Today's podcast, will I'll be joined as always by Taylor Galusha. Uh, because of some scheduling challenges, I think we're going to have to wing this one uh, by ourselves. Um, this will be technically our second episode with without a guest after the intro, but Taylor and I have some fun, important updates to go over with you. So welcome, Taylor. What's going on? How's everything, Ben? Happy Tuesday. Yeah, it's, it's been Tuesday, great. Uh, coming off the long uh, mm-hmm. MLK Junior weekend. Anything fun happen? Um, I ventured into Boston on Monday for a one o'clock Bruins Flyers game at the Garden. What was the result of that? Six zero Bruins. Wow. It was Krejci's thousandth game, so it was good atmosphere. Garden was pretty full for a Monday, Monday afternoon. <laughs> um, yeah. And it was super fun. So That's I had a right. good time. Easy getting in, easy out on the commuter rail. Good use of public transportation. Wow, look at that. A big, yeah. Uh, a big, big public up transportation for the tea. win. Yep. Well, you don't hear thumbs up for the T so often. So nope, that was great. Heard it here on the town manager download. On time both ways. I yeah. can't complain. Wow. And it's snowing and cold out, and you're standing on the train station. Or, yeah, the train station. That's pretty important. I'll be headed into Boston on Friday for a Friday and Saturday conference, the Massachusetts Municipal Association. So it's kind of like a Bruins game, but yeah, for different. local government. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to look forward to for that conference that yeah, you're I'm, excited about? I'm excited about uh, a couple things. So the Friday keynote session uh, will be um, led by uh, the new governor, Maura Healy. So she'll be doing her kind of introductory address to local government. And from that a speech particularly, I'll be listening for uh, anything her administration may be thinking about how they fund local government and yeah. what programs they may continue with the, from the Baker Polito administration. Um, it, it's uh, the Baker Polito administration really did an excellent job of building on a, a great relationship that was um, in place between local government and state government, but they did it kind of um, to the next level. And a uh, big tip of my cat to, hat to uh, Karen Polito, uh, Shrewsbury resident, and all the work that she did as lieutenant governor and uh, building the um, community compact program, which sent a lot of tax dollars from the state level down to the local level in the form of grants. So um, I am really interested to see how uh, this administration's going to work with local governments Mm -hmm. and what they're gonna do with the state funding. So I'm hearing across the country, states are really flush with revenues. Yeah. um, But everyone's concerned about inflation and we can talk a little bit about uh, our budget process uh, and what I'm seeing so far in that coming up. But um, yeah, and then um, I'm actually really excited that uh, I will, I've been elected to the Massachusetts Municipal Managers Association Executive Board and I will get to hold a seat on the Massachusetts Municipal Association Board of Directors in the Local Government Advisory uh, Council, which is a small group of local government managers that advise the governor and lieutenant governor on things of local government. But I am disappointed that that time won't coincide with the Lieutenant Governor Polito's term and Governor Baker, so just missed each other, but um, I'll keep some Shrewsbury eyes on things. <laughs> yeah, uh, can't in, get rid of us meetings. yet. That's right, so <laughs> it's not that easy. It's not that easy by just electing another governor. I snuck in the back door. <laughs> so, That's super exciting. So is that um, like a monthly meeting that you guys attend or quarterly? Yeah. Yeah, it's a monthly endeavor uh, for the MMA Mm -hmm. Board of Directors and for the Local Government Advisory Committee. They kind of um, co-schedule those. So when when and if we're in Boston, we're all there for uh, one day since everyone will be traveling in from across the Commonwealth. And uh, the MMA MMA Executive Board, the Managers Association, Mm -hmm. meets a little bit um, well, about the same cadence uh, at their monthly meetings. So I'm excited about that as well. This is the the first, uh, I guess, association-wide seat that I've held uh, for even the Managers Association. And 
it'll be interesting to see how these things operate and I'll keep everyone updated um, on what we're doing at, at those meetings. So something else to talk about here. So yeah, we'll be headed in there on Friday um, for the conference. There's a lot of good educational sessions and uh, things wrap up late Saturday afternoon, so. Because you guys are there, I don't have to go to class on Friday, so. Oh, I'm, yeah. So what, 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 tell folks about that class, what is so it? So I'm taking the MMA's financial management seminar, which we have every Friday from um, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m and a lot, a lot of different um, local government professionals, whether they're retired or still working in the Commonwealth, um, teach different sessions on budgeting, assessing, accounting, kind of covering all those financial management areas. And I've, been, I've had two classes so far and I've learned a lot, but I get this week off. So oh. I'll be back in the office, which well, you're is nice. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How many weeks is that? I think it's five, five weeks, so 10 sessions. Morning is one session, okay. afternoon is second session. Um, so we take a break this week and then um, three more after that, so. That's great, it's been good so far? Yeah, it, I, I, I mean, I got a dose of the online learning, um, the tail end of my undergraduate and then all of my uh, master's degree. And so it's um, familiar to be back in that online classroom setting. I didn't, I mean, I liked, there's pros and cons to the online learning. I sometimes miss the in-person interaction that I got, but um, it's super convenient being online for it because people from all over the state can attend it instead of being tied to one location. So I think that's nice for the um, towns that have to commute a little bit farther, so. This is part of that ongoing and really strong relationship between the MMA and Suffolk University. Yeah, so it's led through Suffolk. We get to use their Blackboard and everything. So. Okay. Is it, <laughs> do you get master's level credits if you needed to apply them? Um, this program? I, know I think it's just program. a certificate. Oh, I don't okay. think it would. So it's a full certificate program. Yeah. Okay. That's good. No, I'm, I think uh, we talked about in the budgeting career advice section a couple episodes ago it's really important for anyone who is seeking, you know, upper management, mid-level management positions mm -hmm. in local government to get exposure to uh, finances and the big picture of, of how it all really works through the state laws. And I think that's what that program does. So. Yeah, I'm happy it's going on while we're going into our budget cycle because it's given me some more real world application, which I think is. Yeah. A couple Most other helpful. Shrewsbury staff members yeah. have taken that. I know Alex Martinez has taken it. Um, and Natasha other... Cormier's in it right now. Oh, she's too. in that with mm -hmm. you. Great. Uh, it's good for Natasha to be in there as well. She has a big financial role in the DPW. That's great. And um, they so... applauded you on how many people that we encouraged oh, nice. to come. Yeah. Professional development and whatnot. Yeah. So. Valerie Clemmy took the. Full so, one. Yeah, certificate in local government management and did really well. I think it served her well, but the problem is she left after she took it. So <laughs> now she's on the, what they call the light side, which is actually pretty dark at Selco. <laughs> so, but at least she's still in the building and we're happy to see her. Um, Only take a on phone call away. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so that's a look at the last weekend, which was a Bruins game for you and upcoming weekend of an wonderful MMA conference for mm -hmm. me. So we happy to share how that works out and hopefully the weather cooperates. Looks like maybe a little snow coming in for the conference. So it'll just make it very festive for us when we get there. They plan that. Yes, every year, every year they plan it. Sometimes it snows, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> um, upcoming things we also have going on though. We have hopefully this week the magazine copies of the strategic plan should be arriving at our office to start distributing, which I'm really excited to kind of, I mean, the board formally accepted it on the 10th of January at their meeting, but I think once I have the plan in my hand, yeah, it'll feel like that the planning part of the strategic plan has come to a close. So. Yeah, we did a full presentation at the board's meeting on the 10th walk through all the strategic outcome areas mm -hmm. and how we'll implement. And I'm really focused on that implementation and it's 
reinvigorated me and I've been personally diving into uh, the theory of agile management. And I know Julie Tierney in our office is pretty skilled at that. And I see her use that as she's tackled uh, and got up to speed in Shrewsbury. So that's kind of my personal endeavor and journey for the year is to see if there's opportunities for agile management in local government uh, for yeah. us here in Shrewsbury and the implementation of the strategic plan. So it's kind of overwhelming at this point, but <laughs> I just got to take a little bites of the elephant. So I think it's exciting at the same time too, because I think that's what we heard a lot from residents when we were doing that outreach, like how is this going to be implemented? What is the like, practical part of this plan and from the beginning we were like we don't want this to be the book on the shelf that ever gets touched ever again like this is a document for us and for the residents and the community to kind of i guess gather around and kind of be a champion of right. through everyday operations and we've hit the ground running on that with the fy24 budget process which we can work our way into uh, with regards to the strategic plan mm -hmm. any new initiatives, um, any new staff members, new programs, you know, um, kind of outside the norm budget increases in any line have to be tied to the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And they have to be associated with a department goal, which has to be tied to the strategic plan itself. So um, I think the next step for us on the public facing side of things, which we'll be working on is, you know, once we get through the budget process, really putting that up on the website and tracking yeah. it through a simple stoplight um, system to show our progress or lack of progress in certain areas. And uh, we're definitely committed to doing that using the resources that we have. The budget process is really still, in, I think the it's really in the end of the first phase, which is the internal phase where departments have submitted their budget requests to me. They were due about, uh, well, a little week and a half ago. So um, they're a lot higher than I'd like them to be, which in some ways is normal, right? We have departments right. that want to do a lot of things that have the strategic plan and they want to move forward on the implementation mm -hmm. of that strategic plan and do good things. And then inflation is really pushing the limits uh, of what we'll be able to fund. So the sad part about inflation, it's in all those key areas that we right. have, have little discretion over, uh, like, you know, fuel, uh, although we're using less fuel for vehicles because we're having a greener fleet, we, you know, we... It still matches to yeah, where we were pre. Yeah, it's still really expensive. So we're seeing budget line items of notable size that are, you know, our forecasts show they need to be doubled. And yeah. if you have a half million dollar line item, it needs to be a million. Right. Um, for context, uh, with the 4% limit that the select board uh, and school committee agreed to on the municipal side of the budget through the override. That only provides us with $1.1 million of additional funding uh, to spread across a budget that's roughly $32 million in total. And um, it's a lot of money, you know, a million dollars is a lot of money, there's no doubt about it, but when you have to spread it over 250 plus employees and then new initiatives, mm -hmm. it just goes really fast. Yeah. So. Um, it'll be a challenge, and um, that's what we're, we'll really start later this week is those one-on-one -on -one budget meetings and trying to prioritize and see how well people do tying things to the strategic plan. And the better that departmental requests are tied to the plan and clear outcomes, the more likely they'll be funded. So, But I'm worried about inflation and how much money that's eating up. I know. I was just thinking, like, when we order, even order paper for the office. Yeah, I mean, like that's a good the... example. We used to spend, like it was, it's double essentially, right. approaching more than double. So, right. I mean, five reams of paper that we pay now is what we paid for 10. So, right. it's crazy. Yeah, those are the things that are frustrating. That, that We need paper, we need <laughs> to print. Like, it's yeah. not like, yeah. it, I mean, use it as loosely as we right. can, try to manage what we're printing but yeah in the context of, of that you know i know many folks can say well you, well you don't have to print you can go paperless and we're we are trying to do that as much as possible there's still general laws that require us to you know for those critical things that impact people very harshly mm -hmm. like 
real estate and utility bills, which ultimately can be leaned against the property. Right. If you don't pay your you know, tax bills, everyone knows that gets lean. But if you don't pay your utility bills, that can get leaned. And you know, ultimately, way down the road, a property could go into tax foreclosure. So the, the general laws require us to still mail not only a first bill, but multiple notices to residents. And so, yes, there we can do better than we're doing right now on paper mm -hmm. and some of these costs that are really impacted by inflation. But because we're a bureaucratic organization and tied to rules and norms that are very important, um, it's still going to impact us maybe more than other businesses who could just turn off the paper spigot and say, right. uh, we're just going to go paperless now. I know when I was that. in the treasurer's or filling in in the treasurer's office in the front, like if checks are don't have the right amount on it like you have to mail those back with a notice on why it's getting mailed back there's just some things that are totally unavoidable can't email that a check back to somebody right yeah yeah so that's where we are in the budget process still early uh, the, the finance committee is actually going to meet this Thursday and it'll kind of be their run up to uh, their uh, budget proceedings which will start with a budget presentation late in February and mm -hmm. then budget hearings in March, so. Um, and the board's, uh, select board set those action, or that ties into our action dates for the 2023 annual town meeting too. Right. Which you, um, on behalf of the board, did a survey of mm -hmm. our representative town meeting, right? We have 240 representatives on our town meeting, which is the legislative body. And historically they've met starting the third Monday of the month of May. And then during COVID under the emergency rules, we went to a Saturday outdoor meeting um, in a tent in front of Oak Middle School. And we've continued on Saturdays uh, for the uh, following years for town meeting, the last two years actually, 21 and 22. Mm -hmm. So we, we heard feedback and so we said, well, let's ask the residents. So we did a survey, well, let's ask town meeting members. We did a survey, right? When, when do we want to start town meeting? They want to start Monday at 7 p.m., which okay. I don't know if it was shocking because that's how it's always been for them and maybe it's just easier for scheduling purposes and taking a Saturday off your docket, especially in late spring is hard because it's graduation and mm -hmm. wedding season. Um, but yeah, 62% of the respondents said they'd prefer Monday at seven. So how many people responded? Oh, we had 122. So basically exactly half of them responded. So that's pretty good. Yeah, no, I was very impressed and happy with, mm -hmm. uh, with that response rate. So, so it was more than 60% wanted it to be Monday night. Now the challenge with the weeknight town meeting right. is that it's kind of limited, right? We don't, we won't go into the wee hours in the morning. Normally we try to start to wrap things up sometime between 10.30 and 11. And town meeting on average probably takes five or six hours to get through. So what's what would the second night of town meeting be then? Uh, there was a preference to Tuesday at seven. So okay. Monday, Tuesday, and then historically it was not always, but probably most of the time it was Monday, Wednesday. Um, and obviously we will try to cater to that preference, but I mean, scheduling and whatnot right. could be a barrier, but um, if we can do Monday, Tuesday, we will do Monday, Tuesday, and if we can't, do Monday, Wednesday. Yeah, it's funny. I, I would have to check back with uh, the former manager, Dan Morgato, to see if what his opinion of it is. I've heard a lot of opinions why it went Monday, Wednesday. I've heard the school wasn't, Oak Middle School wasn't available right, on that's Tuesdays. What I, heard too. I heard it was a staff thing, so they could be prepared you know, better prepared if things came up in the first night in the budget mm -hmm. process. Uh, I think we're, we'll be well prepared going into the meeting and we've handled obviously the meeting in one sitting for the past, past few years. So I'm not too worried about being prepared. Um, it'll be interesting to get back to a, a evening meeting just like the special town meeting this past fall mm -hmm. and uh, be a little bit more informative from a staff standpoint. Uh, we're going with the alternative, with a different setup and try to yeah. uh, change things up and be more responsive to the feedback that we heard after the special town meeting last fall. So I look forward to getting there, but we have many months to go. This will be Let's... my second annual town meeting. Okay. And I'm going to hope that I don't have the same encounter as my first town meeting with the spider crawling across my dashboard as I'm driving. Oh, well, maybe, maybe that's... 
We'll see what kind of sign that was. Yeah, I, I think um, I think I prefer an evening town meeting. Um, I certainly enjoy my weekends, and it always seemed like Too that short. Saturday was really nice outside. And um, I don't mind losing a few hours in the evenings. We've got a pretty, for myself, you know, a normal schedule mm -hmm. where um, I like to do things in the evening and have free time, but I don't schedule a lot of stuff just because of the commitments of the position. And I know that's what a lot of us do in the office. So um, I would have to say that I would have voted for Monday if I was uh, eligible to vote, which I wasn't. So I'm not one of the 122. So I'm just sharing my opinion. Verified. Verified. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, so that's that's kind of the, the far end of the budget process. Um, we're maybe a third of the way through, at least in my own internal right. uh, calendar. assessment calendar. Um, so, yep, we'll, uh, we'll move forward for that date and get everything in place for it. What else has been happening on the communications front? Um, that's obviously the number one aspect of the strategic plan, the first strategic outcome area is engaged and connected. Right. And we heard people really want us to enhance communications. So I'd like to think the town manager download would be enough, but you don't <laughs> seem to think so, Taylor, and you're doing other things. We so love, what we you love the town on? manager download, but <laughs> we got, I got a lot of things in the works right now, but. Okay. Um, How about two big things? Two big things. Yeah. I, I can do two big things. Right. So I was able to send out uh, I'm calling it my like communications and engagement listserv email. Um, I sent in an, like a opt out email. So I collected all of our town meeting members, board and committee members, former and present, um, sent them an email this morning to kind of just ask them to kind of be a conduit for us um, to communicate out information um, that I'm not gonna bombard them with emails two a month max. Mm -hmm normally um and act actually like i've gotten like four or five different emails back i mean there's 400 people on that list so not so a lot one percent a little over one percent right, that response. we're like this is awesome i'm so excited Good. and i'm i'm serious i'm not exaggerating like mm -hmm. well I someone could few, do a public records request i know and i can verify. send them yes <laughs> i can verify but um, i got a lot of good responses that people were excited about this so well, that's really um, consistent with what we've heard, and I'm glad. Yeah, that this it makes is a good me way feel good, and hopefully, I'll try and collect multiple pieces of information per email just to not oversaturate inboxes. And this will be a good way to get um, information out to all those volunteers and elected positions in our town to communicate with their constituents and their precincts, mm -hmm. friends, family, neighbors, um, just a information share better directly from the town um, like we've been talking about. So another way, in addition to the town manager download, yep. to directly communicate. That's great. Um, and then additionally, we are gonna be having an election forum on February 8th at the Senior Center um, for people that are interested in running for elected positions in town. Um, and that's gonna be at 7 p.m at the Shrewsbury Senior Center. So I think we touched on it a little bit last episode, but again, this is just another way we wanna directly share with our community about um, ways they can get involved, what being elected in town kind of means, like the time commitment that's expected, mm -hmm. um, and just have some good conversations around that, so. Yeah. Or direct outreach. I mean, I don't like to use the word power as it associates with, with our positions, but right. I do like to use the word power when we talk about knowledge is mm -hmm. power. And I, I that's what we're trying to do with all of this is provide people with more information about how we operate and what it is that we do in a variety of positions. And obviously our elected positions, you know, is a very small bucket of the total um, right. ways that, you know, people can be involved with what we do. Uh, town meeting, is the biggest of those buckets, and, and we'll talk about that. It's not overly complicated, but if someone has no idea what it means, it probably is a lot more scary, maybe intimidating than you would think it would be. So we wanna reduce that barrier as much as possible. And I think it's going to bring a lot of people that maybe 
that will be super talented that may be slightly interested and mm -hmm. if they can just understand that time commitment if nothing else and what they have to do to get there hopefully that provides them with better information and right. i hope that some of those people who were marginally interested become more interested and find a way to run for positions and become involved because the more folks that are involved, just the better it will be. And um, so, yeah, that will be an interesting evening on February 8th for the election forum. It'll be the first time we've ever done anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Teresa Flynn, who's on the select board, you know, had brought that idea up and, uh, of course, embraced by the rest of the board. Um, but board members take on kind of their own, they seek their own path on initiatives and what they're excited about doing and how it ties into their role in the strategic plan. And this one obviously fits really nicely. So um, any uh, sneak previews on who may be talking or we don't know, we don't know that yet. It's a secret. Oh, wow. Well, we'll have to work on that. <laughs> so we thought we always had I'm the excited. inside track. That's good. I'm excited. That's good. I like planning these yep. events, so. It'll be yeah. good. good. Good stuff. All right. So those are the two big communications updates. Um, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, this is the first time here in Shrewsbury that um, I've worked on this. Uh, we're going through a cable franchise agreement relicensing process or licensing okay. process. Um, in order to have cable TV, of course, in much of the country, the, the municipality that you operate in, whether you're a big company or a, a, a company like Selco that's just focused on Shrewsbury, you have to be licensed by the governing board, by the select board. And uh, you can have an agreement for up to 10 years. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're at the end of that last 10 year period. It expires in March and uh, Chris Roy, the general manager of Selco, myself have been renegotiating an agreement and Selco is going to come in, Chris Roy, and a member of the Selco board is going to come in at the board's meeting on January 24th, a week from today, and make a presentation on that agreement and proposal. So um, it will be a continued internal partnership, but a really, uh, well, it's one, it's required to have the license and an important process to define what's going to happen. Um, there's a lot of certainty as everyone knows about cord cutters and uh, of, of course the cable aspect of the operations is a little bit closer to the internet operations but mm -hmm. it's not one and the same so we don't license the internet aspect of the of the business but we do license cable and because of the uncertainty and the cord cutting and technology changes um, Selco is proposing a five-year agreement which okay. I think is really it's, it's a wise thing to do mm -hmm. uh, we want a solid financial relationship with Selco, but not one that the town bankrupts itself, right, right. or any right. aspect. And as revenue declines, um, it's important, I think, to do a shorter cycle and revisit that. Ten years is a long time. Five years is long enough. Um, so uh, I I'm glad that we're into it. It was, you know, it's a fair agreement. It's very different than the prior ones because of all those changes in the cable marketplace but I think still provides real value to the community and um, provides good funding for uh, SMC, who um, enables the town manager download and a lot of other uh, very valuable uh, media endeavors with regards to the local government and the community, uh, none of which is more important than the airing of our uh, public meetings. So that's really critical that we keep doing. So uh, this agreement, I think keeps us on track to, to do that for at least the next five years and um, we can make sure we're in a good financial situation beyond that through both the franchise agreement and other means when they present it. So yeah, that'll be on the um, meeting on the 24th with the select mm -hmm. board. It will actually continue. Right, there's through, a few more yeah. steps after too. There's public comment period, written public comment period. There's a, there'll be a public hearing that's scheduled by the select board and either the night of the public hearing, um, depending on the written and verbal comments or a meeting thereafter. But sometime before the end of March, the board will have to take a vote uh, to enter into the a license agreement, whether right. it's what Chris and I are proposing or, or something similar or different to that. So that's That'll be a big part of the next, definitely three of the next six meetings that yeah. the select board has, uh, if not uh, more than that. And there will be a public hearing process. We encourage folks to 
um, pay attention and uh, read the cable franchise agreement once it's posted online. Tune in for the Cliff Notes version on the 24th. Selco is also going to provide an update on their uh, fiber to the home initiative and other projects, uh, their climate action oriented uh, endeavors when they come in on the 24th. So I'll be excited to hear that as awesome. well, what they have to, to say to the board. So never, never a lack of things to have on a select board meeting. No, um, never. So <laughs> we do have to have Chris in and maybe after we get through this uh, negotiation of a cable franchise agreement and uh, we can have him on and we can talk about public power and cable and other things like that. Other than that, on the horizon, um, I don't mean to minimize it at all, but we're going to do a soft uh, opening of the police station. Mm -hmm. I call it soft because we're not going to have any public participation in it, but we will be getting... Um, the police station open and operable on February 20th, that week. It's right around the corner. It's right around the corner, only a month away. These are long processes, long cycles, uh, a lot of hard work up front and convincing the community and then borrowing and, and getting through the process. And this one's gone really smoothly and really proud of it. Um, I can't wait for the residents to see it. We talked about it with Chief Anderson a couple episodes ago, but uh, it's, it's a really great facility that will serve us well into the future, but that takes me the whole way back to the weekend, which was just a few days ago. Market Basket opened, oh. right? I yes, mean, uh, it made lots of newspapers. It made a lot I, of newspapers, people right? People told me they drove by it. I mean, I saw it on TikTok. I saw someone yeah. post a TikTok of the new Market Basket. Yeah. I, saw funny, I saw the little Edgemere sign. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's our Market Basket. Yeah. A lot of people in the office will laugh, laugh at me, but I saw Instagram reel about it as well. I know that's like... I'll see another one in six months. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> always get beat up in the office. No respect. So. <laughs> yeah, so we're very happy to welcome Market Basket. We got a uh, a little preview tour last Wednesday, uh, at least I did. Um, Taylor didn't get to go, but uh, it's it's an amazing facility. They have a, a nice uh, spirits liquor store next door. Mm -hmm. So uh, we encourage everyone to go from uh, the things we think about in local government standpoint, traffic seemed to work really well. Nice. We need to adjust some timing of the traffic lights because Lake Street was backing up a little further than we wanted it to. So we need to lengthen that cycle to get folks where off of Lake go. Street. I um, only heard of a couple minor parking space disputes from the police department in their report, but um, I don't believe anyone was injured, which is a good thing. But uh, no, it was all positive. Um, the store seemed to be packed and probably is still packed at this time. Mm -hmm. We're happy to have them in town and um, just uh, another success story in, in orchestrating planning for the community mm -hmm. and, and how things um, work in these really long project cycles. I literally, it was within the first week, but I feel like it was my first day on the job. I had a, a, one of the preliminary meetings with Market Basket uh, and this redevelopment of the Edgemere Drive-In. So that's five and a half years in the making um, and beyond that they were working on right. before I got here. So happy to have them. I don't think there's anything else to, to really go through. Anything else on your list today? I don't think so. All right. I, I would like to encourage everyone to reach out to us um, for resident questions for um, our resident questions segment um, at tmdownload at shrewsburyma.gov uh, to participate that will almost help. live in that, our podcast. That's right. And that will help us. get us in the direction of being the best podcast. local government in the world. <laughs> <laughs> right? The best podcast, which will help the best local government. So let's do one more segment. Let's do a, the best. The best. It's just the two of us. So we can be completely honest. No one right. will ever know. Right. All right. Okay. So we got three best questions today for the best yeah. podcast for the best local government. So I'll start. What's the best concert you've ever been to? Paul McCartney oh, wow. at Fenway. Interesting. It was so fun. Hmm. It was also the first concert I had been to since COVID. So 
it was, I guess, double the experience, sure. but he was 79 years old and he did not take a break for five minutes. That I was, was one in the last year, right? Yeah, it was uh, this past summer, 20, summer of 2022. So I, he turned 80 like a week later. Ooh. I was like, you, if you told me you were 70 or 69, <laughs> like 68, I you wouldn't. I wouldn't bat question. an eye. Yeah. yeah, he was he was great. He didn't yeah. sound like he didn't sound old. So good that's awesome. Him. Good for him. I think I I got to see Tom Petty in uh, the late 90s, which was a lot of fun. Um, so that's probably the concert that I remember the most. I don't go to a lot of concerts though. Really? I've probably only been to four in my life so my i know you were at 40,000 <laughs> last yeah, my year my first so. concert was jimmy buffett and nice. i was like six. Oh, so stuff in the blender and all that stuff <laughs> <laughs> i was just doing fins nice. back and forth awesome. <laughs> i don't know what's going on all right what's your the best what is the best chip and dip combo wow i'm gonna go with Fritos and buffalo chicken dip. Buffalo chicken dip is top tier. I yeah. will agree. Um, my, I don't know, eat it all the time, but like nostalgically, Doritos with like the Fritos cheese dip is probably like that's a lot. It reminds me of like childhood swimming at my uncle's pool. That's like an extra like, chip. Yeah, for a dip combination. Yeah, it's so good. It, I mean, I don't know. I couldn't tell you what's in the Fritos cheese dip. Mm -hmm. Could not tell you anything. One ingredient <laughs> on the back probably of that. Probably zero cheese. I can right. tell you that. <laughs> but that's probably, that's the best, best dip combo. Interesting. All right. So how about the best sporting event? That like sports team sporting event in general or that I've been to? That you've been to. I mean, you can't tell me about the best sporting event that you haven't been to. I know. I just, in general, like, <laughs> like is a baseball game the best? Is a oh. hockey game the best? Well, you can I'll, interpret the question okay. however you want to. Um, I went to, I was very, I was younger, but I remember we went to a Red Sox game Father's Day weekend with my dad, and it was right after the Bruins won the Stanley Cup. Oh. And they brought, they had the duck boats on the field with the Stanley Cup, and then we got to go on the field afterwards because it was Father's mm -hmm. Day weekend. Mm -hmm. I think my dad would have the same answer. We went to Jimmy Buffett the next day, too. That's awesome. <laughs> so um, I think the best, and I'll use like with fan interaction, so mm -hmm. um, when my kids were younger, they played club soccer, and they were you know, huge fans, and this is when the U.S. women's team uh, won the World Cup in 20, I guess it was 2014, 2015 time frame, and we went to yeah. a Boston Breakers game, uh, you know, former NWSL team, and um, there was a lot of on-field interaction, and uh, my wife and kids got to take selfies with, like, Allie Krieger and a bunch of the women's team stars, so that was high-level fan interaction, so that one, it definitely stands out. Um, I can tell you about a lot of old, famous Pittsburgh hockey players that I used to go watch and see on the Penguins, but we can save that for, <laughs> save for that another, for another time. Episode. We'll save that for another episode. <laughs> so, well, this was, uh, I think, a lot of quick hits for the Town Manager download, a little different than we've done for the last few episodes. It was really good to get people up to speed uh, and let them know what we're thinking about, you know, both now and in the future. Uh, we're going to have some guests on upcoming episodes, and we'll continue to drop them uh, every other week on Tuesdays. And please, as Taylor said, don't hesitate to reach out at tmdownload at shrewsburyma.gov. Uh, we're looking for your questions and your uh, podcast topic ideas, and we really appreciate you taking the time to listen. On behalf of Taylor Galusha, I'm Kevin Mizikar. Thank you for listening to the Town Manager Download.